What up, what up, Refield, what up, y'all, Greet, what it do, welcome back to Refield, y'all, welcome to you. If you knew, hey, welcome to you too. This is your girl, Lati, here at Tears of Retro Show, where you're showing sure show up, never know what you're going to get. We're listening to some rain music so that we can ground a bit. Lip gloss. If you know, you know. What up, y'all? It's week. What it do if you return and welcome back, welcome back, welcome to. If you knew, again, welcome to you too. I welcome you, just like you were my first ones and twos. Y'all. Pain a purpose. Purpose from pain. That's what I was feeling with the alpha was saying. You know, healing is a thing and sometimes you know things are unclear in terms of what it is that's happening and what you're supposed to do with it how you supposed to heal from it how can you move on how can you help impact change i lost the box to these cards beloved I'm not for sure what I done did with it. It should be I here this. Thank you so much for putting my eye on it. Yeah. Any of you caught my live? It was just a few minutes. And could we for deeply, succinctly, synchronistically? Yeah. Because I don't think it was a coincidence that we ended at 7 minutes and 11 seconds. I don't. Um... 7-Eleven is a, a special number to me. It is. Um, but I feel like the most I got was bringing a message. Y'all, I broke my nail and everything. I'm trying to, you know, get this off so that I can fix it. Anywho. We got a comment from a person on the last video, not the last we did, but the last one, I think the one for the day, I believe it was, I say, today is January 23, 2024, beloved, and I think it is, you know, the name of the title is something about, you know, intimacy, getting intimate with B, really you, we being intimate with the most high God. The source of your soul, beloved. Wherever you feel like you come from. Being close to self, right? And knowing yourself so well that you can feel the inklings of the body being in flow and succinct and being able to make quick decisions because you are so in tune with your gut, with your instinct, is what I feel. And... This woman came in my page saying that, you know, I'm saying that the Most High God, uh, the sexually assaults children. That's not what I'm saying at all, beloved. And I can tell you that this person did not sit and listen to the message. They couldn't have. Because if they did, they would hear me say that those are ways for us to move pain to purpose. If we have survived such atrocities, that we have a service in that week, that there is something that we can do to help others who may have experienced something similar. What did I just say? Purpose, beloved. So, honesty. All these intuition cards, acceptance, and failure. I see patience. And I see pride. And I see happiness. And then we have fear. Sometimes people can't be honest with self. And I'm not saying this person had anything to do with what happened to their child. I just can't. I know what I'm here to do, though. I'm here to do what the Most High God tells me to do. And bring the messages that the Most High God tells me to bring. And to say it. And we often do it conversationally. And we do it based on, again, they them speaking through me. Testimony to Tarot is what we call it. Moving pain to purpose, yo. 
We have experienced pain. We have experienced atrocities. Even things that get perpetrated. Do we say it? Perpetrated against children. We, yeah. It ain't everybody's, you know, I guess it's testimony. And to, it don't have to have all the details, beloved. It just don't. But it's just the point that oftentimes in families, and this is something that uh, I have been called to recently, and I have been reposting it on my Facebook page because it's a podcast with these two ladies who are discussing it. And I thought it was very interesting, and it was something that was worthy to be recirculated, to continue to circulate that type of energy, that type of messaging as we move forward to protect young people. Not just young people, but also elderly. You know what I mean? The fact that a lot of these essays, these assaults against children happen in families, beloved. It do. And it's that uncle that you can't spend a night with. Oh, just don't sit on their lap, beloved. Uh, no, uh, you, you know. But we have a generational curse of not prosecuting those who we know and families harm children. That they have these urges that they have no healthy outlet for, no mental health for, because where do people go to address their own uh, inappropriate sexual urges? It ain't a whole lot that I've seen for people to have that address. And I know from not only experience, and this is a generational curse, when you can look back your, your generation, your parents' generation, their parents' generation. To just, I mean, Sophia was talking about it. That's the, the, one of the main lines in the color purple. A girl child ain't safe in the house full of men. I mean, let's talk about it, we. Like, I mean, we don't get here overnight. So maybe the most high God is bringing these things up to like putting it in the forefront so that people could speak up and stop sweeping the shit underneath the rug. I don't know that woman's story. I don't. But if it's anything like the many others, a child being harmed in that way is usually because somebody is in the home, somebody that probably should have been locked away, that should have been prosecuted, that should have been taken out. And I mean, like, if you want to go to the, like, the back-in-the-day type shit or whatever they do to people like that in prison, it ain't my place to judge, beloved. I'm going to keep my mouth up off of it. But at the same time, y'all know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. So, no, this space ain't over here saying that the Most High God essays children. Absolutely not. But what I am saying is that society is at a place where they sweep the shit up underneath the rug instead of pulling it out and putting it in that person's face. Like, you don't touch children. And if you are a danger to children or society in that type of way, we're going to prosecute you and lock your ass up, I say. And then on the other end of it, where is the help for people who know they have them fucked up urges? Why they can't speak about it? Why they ain't got no help? Because that shit is mental for you to look at a child in that type of way and you know that that shit is inappropriate. Oftentimes it's because a person been hurt. They themselves have been a victim and unable to change it from victim to victor and overcome the atrocity that has been perpetrated against them. So they perpetuate the same cycle against another child, against many children. But we act like all of these things are just the fault of the Most High God. No, it's not. It's demons out here. I mean, real for show demons that do nasty shit that that fucking 
people feel like they've been possessed by something. They can't stop their urges. They cannot control themselves. And I'm not saying like they done went and did a seance and something done jumped in their body. No, I'm saying that they have an illness. There's something wrong in the spirit that needs to be worked out, beloved. And there is no place for people to go and address it. Not only do we lack resources to help people deal appropriately with their off-the-cuff urges, we, pe we see uh, dominatrix shit, we see motherfucking S&M shit, we see all of that shit where people can go to places and have their fantasies fulfilled. But what do you do when your fantasy is that you want to do something to a child, beloved? That shit carries a level of shame that most people... Try to hold back and hold in until they explode and give in to something that they themselves know is wrong. This ain't no excuse or justification for nobody. I'm just talking brass tacks because I can understand how that shit gets perpetuated. We talk about people ain't supposed to be prostitutes. They not supposed to strip. They not supposed to do none of that shit in order to get uh, give other people an outlet. Because I personally feel this is just me. I'm 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 differently different. We y'all know what it is. And 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 warning, right? But if a person that has some fucked up urges has somewhere to go to take out all them weird ass fucking fantasies, and not just saying I mean they're weird or not weird is weird to me. Because anytime you look at a child like that, beloved, it's inappropriate. But they need to have somewhere to go to fucking have an outlet so that your, that outlet is not somebody else's child, beloved. It's plenty of grown-ass women that got some fucking weird-ass fantasies, too, that would dress up in any kind of way and give them an outlet so that they don't hurt a kid, I say. But that shit is what? Too unorthodox? It's too out the box? Come on, man. I don't know what to say outside of we can't just be going around just blaming the most high God for everything. That ain't right. Because again, the most high God made everything in creation, but people choose to do some fucked up shit. They choose instead of getting help. Yeah, I don't want to say that. What y'all do say? Thank you to the Most High God, the Alpha and Omega, for being here with us. We know that you are the author of good and evil, and we know that the world, our creation, that the manifest is full of chaos. We know that there are those who roam back and forth, to and fro, that wreak havoc on souls. We understand that there is a, another force that imposes its will upon us. Personal journey. Everybody is walking along this journey and people do fucked up shit because there's other forces to account for. And that's just true. It's wars and pestilence and, 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 and hunger, starvation, people being assaulted and violated on a daily People who choose to lean into the dark shit and get into those urges versus finding another way to live, coming away from it, looking up, stepping into the light, finding the help that you need so that you don't hurt another person. We see it whether it's violence against children, violence against the elderly, violence against Just creation in general. We, we out here doing some incredibly atrocious, heinous, abhorrent things. And to think that the Most High God delights in that, I would never say that I subscribe to that. Absolutely not. If we can see the low that we can find the high, we can see that that shit ain't right and it's time to do something right, something for real. 
something that's going to bring about change. That's why we're here. Pain and purpose. We didn't experience a variety of different pain factors. And we can speak about it as we are called to do so. One of the major things is experiencing that from somebody that's supposed to protect you, yo. Like your first protector. Like fathers. People that's supposed to have your back. Like brothers. People that's supposed to be stand-ins and other comforters and, 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 you know, shields from the world like uncles. We're talking about babysitters, women who hurt children. We're talking about teachers messing with their students. We'll bring that to light. A teacher that messed with a student, yeah. But what happens when it's your brother and they did something to your child and you got to go and prosecute them? What happens when we don't do it because it was your father? What happens when you knew that your brother was doing it to your other brother but nobody did nothing about it? They kept it undercover. Just... Layer upon layer upon layer. Curse after curse after curse. Somebody got to break it. Somebody got to say enough is enough. Somebody got to say we taking all of this pain and moving it to purpose. Who's going to be committed to do it? Is that your personal journey? Is that your journey? Is that your walk? To do it step by step in the present? Honesty. Can we have some honest conversations? And I don't know that woman's story. I don't. I don't know what happened to her child. I don't know what where she was at. If she trusted somebody that she shouldn't have. If somebody got them on the way home from school. If it happened in a daycare. If it happened in a residential center. If it happened in a hospital. If it, if, if it was her boyfriend. It, it, you don't know who it was. But we know this shit happens. And oftentimes the, the person, the perpetrator that did it is somebody that shouldn't be out in society anyway. Because oftentimes it's not their first time. And if it is their first time, then we treat it like it's going to be the last time. No other child will I allow you to hurt. We need to stand up and say something. We need to not sweep it up underneath the rug. We need to get that person some help. Or in the facility that they go to needs to be helped to help deal with. Not necessarily just rehabilitate them. Because if you got a sickness like that, we don't know if it can be rehabilitated. But what are the outlets to keep them from being a danger to society, beloved? Thank you to the Most High God for being here. Thank you to the Most High God for having courage, for giving me the courage and the strength to speak out and speak up. For those who have been hurt, how do we use the pain, beloved? How do we change it into purpose? How do we accept it? Learning to accept the things that we can't change. Authority. How do we take things to the authority? Not only the Alpha and Omega, but also the authorities of the land, the law, and prosecute these people. To take ownership over self. To say, I'm not going to allow you to do this, Asha. You've done it, and I can't change the past. I have to accept that this has happened. And that's a hard ass fucking thing to do. Nobody is saying that the shit is easy. We, but that's why we need 
faces that talk about it, that come together in camaraderie and support to say, yeah, me too. Integration is here. The frequency authority reminds us that true authority is powerful. It is directed, realized yet receptive, wise, and loving. Beloved, it is loving. I'm hearing light on voluntary escape. Love. We come to this plane and we know I'm seeing dangerous, chaotic, confusing, hurtful. I see death. I see words that I can't say. S that that starts with a R though, just blatantly, you know. People can be evil. They could be cutthroat and downright dangerous. Well, snuff your life out. Take your life without even thinking about it, beloved. No remorse. No regret. And oftentimes, it's the one right next to you. The one right next to you. The closest ones to you. Most of the hurt that I've experienced in my life, nearly all of it has come from people who were the closest to me. Friends. Family. What do you do? That's why I was saying the post that I shared on Facebook these two women talking about pedophilia and what happens when the person that's supposed to protect you is the one that violates you. And you look down the generation and you find that that person had been violated. And you find that somebody else before them had been violated. At this point, this is not happenstance. This is not coincidence. This is a curse, beloved. Pedophilia that runs through families, generation upon generation upon generation, is a curse. And how do we break the curse if people are not honest about what happens? They gloss over it, rose-colored glasses, and put these fake shit in place like it's a protection. Fake shit. Oh, we not going to say nothing. Oh, we going to just let it go like it was nothing. When people are hurt and lives are destroyed because of it. Women who can't talk about their inability to have a sexual relationship. To partner appropriately because they've been violated at such a young age. So to the woman that left me her comment, the eternal Lord of all of creation knows that this evil exists. And it's those like us who are strong enough to be honest and speak out against it that make the difference. Come together and purpose and do some shit. Women who lose their children to drunk driving, they organize themselves and change laws, beloved. Maybe it should be a law against mothers who don't prosecute those who SA their children. 
Maybe some of them should be held accountable for not protecting. For leaving other children at risk. Because you know that this person is sick. They have an illness. We don't know what it's going to look like. But we know it's got to change. We know that some people, somebody has got to be committed to the cause, beloved. And if you are that one, I applaud you and I support you in your work. I will continue to spread Job's message the same way that I spread others who are speaking out about the same. Not only through my, my own messaging, because I do. I feel your pain. But I know within me is the spirit of the Most High God, beloved. And through us, change can happen. The Most High God can work. And we can work to eradicate that, to catch it early before somebody gets hurt. Because oftentimes people know. They know who it is. They know that something's wrong. They know that something's off. And instead of us having a rule of just don't sit on their lap or no, you can't spend the night over here. How about we do something so that nobody else doesn't get hurt? Like that's the system of control. And it's not. Where are the authorities? And if they don't take it seriously, then we get to organize. We, that's where local elections count. The mayor race, who happens to pick the chief. How do we make our voices known? Not just this national shit where people feel like no matter what you vote, it ain't going to make a difference. But where's your local elections? Are you checking who's on the ballot? How do they protect your city? How do the laws that are in place to protect your children? We, like, there's more things that we could do besides just accepting that it's up to the Most High God who allows all these things to happen. That's not true. I see gratitude. I see mirror. My spirit is crying out, beloved. It's crying. And usually I would have a person who comes with such nasty comments. I would have. I would I would have, you know, I feel like this. I wanted to, you know, link up with them. I invited them in. I wanted to, because they leave a nasty comments and it does cast negativity in the space. But I wanted to have her back because I understood where she was coming from. I could empathize. And if I was in her shoes, beloved, I could see how she was thinking. Many people who have been violated and have some, you know, again, are survivors or some of some heinous things, one of the things they do is blame the Most High God for allowing it to happen. They blame the Alpha and Omega for allowing it to happen. They blame the justice system for failures. We saw failures. Sometimes some of these people should have been locked up. And we don't know what happens with the case. Some people just say, I tried to prosecute this person and they still got away. How is that fair? I'm not saying that it's fair. I'm not saying I got an answer to why everything happens. I just don't. My thing, and it's easy to say we can blame it on the low energies. But I do feel like you have to be taken over by something in order to harm a child like that. Babies, beloved. Boy, girl, it don't matter. Because boys are victimized just as much as little girls and nobody says anything. Recharge is here. Maybe I need to recharge. We definitely playing some grounding music. And this right here is a heavy thing to work through. 
I don't know. Maybe it's breaking out. See, we see unlimited potential. It's here. And I feel like the potential is unlimited. Like, we can do something, beloved. We are not set in a fixed situation where there are no opportunities. There are no choices. When people band together like that together card, they come together in purpose. It's, a, it's some amazing things that can happen. I mean, we see it all the time. I mentioned mad mothers against drunk driving, but it's so many other examples of how regular, everyday people come together to say enough is enough on some shit. It's still people who are organizing against gun violence. Which should be some easy shit to solve. I mean, like, I mean, like, you can't put it all away, obviously. Not, I'm not saying that. But to have a child shot in school, oh, we can do something about that. We, we really can. But again, people want it both ways. They don't want to do nothing about the Second Amendment and what type of motherfucking guns we have in society. Because people feel like they need AKs and 47s and all that shit. They want to feel like you can take your 10-year-old shooting. You want to feel like you can you know, have all of these privileges, but at the same time, you don't want that shit in school. We, it's a give and take. It's some, some sacrifices are going to have to be made. And I can't tell nobody to do a fuck shit thing, but I do understand organizing self and getting with the authorities. We can make change happen. And if that person is so inclined to move that pain to purpose, I feel like she would be a force to be reckoned with. Get that shit up and out. Get it up and get it out. That's what we doing. Because, again, like I said, it's something that I could have easily deleted. Block this person. But no, I understand the hurt. I have empathy. I can understand that if something had to happen to my child like that, beloved, how she would be mad at the most high God. Like you could stop everything. If that is the destiny. Like you control faith. You control everything that happens. Why didn't you stop it? It's the same question as. Why doesn't the most high God just eradicate all sin? Why does anybody suffer at the hands of anyone else? Period. I don't have to answer the up and out again. I just don't have an answer. We see mirror opening ourselves up, being vulnerable, telling our story, changing ourselves on the inside so we can change the world on the outside. Talking about healing. Talking about just doing your best on a day-to-day, -day, beloved. Just do your best. It's all you can do. We are all doing the best with the understanding and awareness we have in this moment. Yes. It's just what we know in the moment. And we do the best that we can. And each day, we work at being better and better and better at it. How do we help others? Creating our own happiness. And sometimes, people have a very distorted view in how they get their joy, how to get their fulfillment. And those people need help, beloved. We lack resources. And it's not like the resource we don't necessarily lack them. They are not available to us because people tend to invest in other things. Where is true resources for mental health, beloved? We talking about personality disorders. We are talking about sexual disorders. But there's no outlet for it. People don't even really have a conversation, beloved. Why we can't have a conversation? Why we can't organize around it when so many people are hurt by it? How do we do that? Fresh start.
you are being given an opportunity to begin again. Allow yourself to embrace this new life and open up fully to this gift that you've been given. The gift that I have been given in terms of a fresh start in life is to speak up for others that I feel like need to have a voice. To say it, to be honest. That to me is my purpose. Tears and weep to roll show. Where you show enough, never know what you're going to get. Because in this life, that's exactly what it is. Whatever is, you don't know what you're going to get. People get hurt all the time. People do fuck that shit to one another. Why? Because creation doesn't realize that it's whole, that it's complete. It does feel broken. Because that's what the mind and the messaging is to me. That we are separated. That we're not one. That I can violate you and be perfectly okay with it. Because I think that what I do to you has no impact on me. We need to reassess this situation. Reassess it. Look again. See how does what I do to you affects me. Where are the consequences and repercussions? Lee? Where did this shit come from? How did it start? How long has this curse been running through your family and knowing that you ain't the only one? How do we get help? How do we lend a hand? How do we say, I'll stand with you because I understand? I see patience. I see soaring high. I see checking in with one another. detachment we definitely are detached from one another we don't see each other as each other where I would not do to you what I don't want done to me you've been asked to detach from something that you've been holding on to when we hold on too tightly to the desired outcome it restricts the flow trust that the outcome will work out and let go of your attachment to it Sometimes we become attached to people. We become attached to situations. You want me to take this out? We become attached to situations. We become attached to protecting those who should be held accountable. Attached to protecting those who to be held accountable. And the shit still is happening every single day. All day. How many seconds do they say it happens? Align ourselves. Come into alignment. I feel organizing. Finding like-minded individuals. All of those others that have the same testimony, the same story. Again, Me Too ain't just for the females. The dudes gonna be out here like Me Too too. Shit. It ain't just y'all that get violated. No. And it ain't just me and that do it either. I say protection. How do we align ourselves to protect ourselves and protect that and those that we love most? How do we heal? So people can have a fresh start. How do we heal and also give those who have some fucked up shit going on a goddamn choice? Like I said, a healthier choice, a healthier outlet. That means that they don't perpetuate or violate somebody that is vulnerable, I say. Because it's got to be a twofold solution. It ain't just no one thing, beloved. Check in. Yeah, I heard check into a clinic.
maybe we need somebody to manifest it. You know, a place where people can go to check in and have their shit checked out before they fucking check out on somebody else. If it's already didn't happen, how do we stand in solidarity again, arm to arm, to protect the vulnerable? We to say that this person has done something heinous and we need to hold them accountable. How do we run up in our local communities to make sure that the laws in place are protecting children, elderly, women, and men, anybody that has been violated? Sewing up the holes and plugging them up so that they don't slip through the cracks. Like, what the fuck? Like, no. This person has hurt somebody that was unable to protect themselves. And they need to be held accountable before they hurt somebody else. See, we the ones that we are the victors of those types of situations are called to do something with the pain, beloved. Otherwise, it eat at us. And we sit there and we blame the author of creation. No, we have choice. And we know that it's this realm, I mean, like, existence has chaos and violence. It is. It, it, it's a, it, it, it just is. It does. But we can take our power back. We have within us the ability to overcome it. We do, beloved. I believe that we do. And I believe that the eternal Lord of our creation will help us, will help me, will help you. When you decide that that's the journey, that's what you're going to do with the pain, with that energy, what is afflicting you, what was done onto your child, onto your elder person, onto yourself. Will you stand against it? Will you speak up about it? Will you say, not another one in my family, beloved? How do we move the baton? How do we create a fresh start? How do we break the curse? I feel personally, it starts with holding motherfuckers accountable. Raising your voice and saying no more. I've been on every side of it. Well, not the side of the purpose of, you know, against a child. No, absolutely not. But those choices and decisions to make, what do you do in those situations? I empathize with you. It ain't easy when it's a parent, when it's a brother. It ain't easy. But what do we do to break the curse? Because somebody has got to do something. And I feel like it's us. So, if you come back and you watch the episode... I pray you do. I pray that it reaches you in some sort of way. Because my energy would have been to delete the comment and say this is absurd. If you listen to the message, there's no way that you could have got that. But the eternal Lord spoke to me and said that this person is hurting. They need comfort. They need support. They need someone with an empathetic and sympathetic ear to see past the pain, even if that's all that they hear is pain. But how do we transmit it? How do we take that pain and turn it into purpose? Thank you guys so much for joining me here. Another episode of Tears of Each World Show. We show sure nothing nothing about what you don't get for nothing. This is Trash. 
because it's so hurtful. And I get it. When we are hurt, we want to look for somebody to blame. How did you allow this to happen? How? When I look across the plane itself, across creation, and just hear um, what we can experience, I see the most atrocious things and it rips me to pieces. Not just what happens to children and to elderly, the violations against our person, against our bodies, but the wars, the starvation, the imbalance in resources, how we fund things that make absolutely no sense, and the things that we really need. are not even yet in existence. They're not even in existence. How do we break free? How do we break those chains? Dude? How do we say that this person who has urges that they can't say to anybody else because they know that they wrong and they feel ashamed? Where do they go? to express themselves in their own way, in a way that doesn't hurt anybody else, I say. I'm not saying that, the, that their need is your need. I'm just saying, how do we help them so that they don't hurt another week? Mental health is a serious thing. It's all kind of personality disorders and sexual disorders that we just don't treat. It's a two-sided coin. And the solution has to be dynamic. It is not only holding people accountable, but prevention as well. Treatment, support on all ends of the spectrum. And I'm one of those people that's open to having and pushing out these types of conversations. Thank you to the Alpha and Omega that made me to be the infinite intelligence, breathing, word, resurrecting this day. Definitely don't have all the answers. I ask you to meditate and to pray to the next now. This is done. I share. Thank mm -hmm. you.